All right, today we're joined by Sophie Wong. Sophie is a designer and a maker who makes everything from costumes to wearable tech. She writes for Adafruit. She writes for Hackspace Magazine. She writes for Make Magazine. She also documents her projects at sophiewong.com and over on her YouTube channel. In today's Cool Tool Show and Tell, we're going to be talking to Sophie Wong about one of her favorite tools. Sophie, thanks for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, Sophie, tell me today about, well, actually, let's start this off. Sophie, tell me what you've been up to, because I also want to, to hear about what's going on in Sophie world. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been doing a lot of, I've been cranking projects out. I don't know. I got to the end of last year, and I had done a lot of things that were not generating projects at the end of the year. Like I was making so, doing some work with other people, like doing photo shoots and making videos and stuff. And I just had all these ideas stored up in my head. And so I've just started making all of them and it's like kicked off this really productive beginning of the year, which has been awesome. Um, but I've been doing a lot of wearable projects, which is you, often what I do. And I've been really diving into Circuit Python, and I'm not, I'm not a coder, you know, like my background is not in coding, I'm a designer, so I'm learning a lot of code as I go. And it's been a few years now, but I'm still, I still feel like I'm really a beginner. Um, but I've been able, like this year, and the end of last year has really been the beginning of me being able to code projects pretty much on my own. I keep them really simple, but it's just feel, felt like a huge step forward for me in terms of creating like interactive projects or projects with lights in them that actually do things and animate in ways that I want them to instead of just kind of using whatever I can find out there that I can, you know, bend to my idea. So I've been doing like I made a, a helmet with some lights in it. I made um, a skirt that has lights in it. I've done at the end of last year, I did like a, a circuit playground theremin that I built into a pumpkin. Like now that I can put code into whatever I want, I've just like the ideas are just coming and I'm just trying to keep up with them. You know, that's that's I, I so aspire to be there because <laughs> uh, it's been for I feel like I've been just dancing with Arduino for so long and not having it quite stick the way I'd ever want to. I've gotten comfortable enough with Arduino, mm -hmm. right? I know where to look for the code. Like I know how to, how to copy and paste my way out of a problem with code. Oh yeah. But still not where I'm just gonna open up the Arduino IDE and just start, you know, code, coding just things typing. together. typing. Yeah. yeah, that's, and that is also another big breakthrough that I've had recently, which is like my idea of what it means to be a coder or someone who's competent at coding has completely changed. Like I totally envisioned someone sitting in front of their computer with a totally blank screen and just typing and like code just coming out of a vacuum, <laughs> you know, like, and I, the more I talk to people and ask people for help and Google things, I'm realizing that that's like, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure some people are capable of doing that, but in general, that's not really the way a lot of people code. Like yeah. really experienced programmers are Googling things a lot, looking things up. You can't possibly keep all of that information in your brain at one time. So for me, just being able, like coding things is really about looking things up yeah. and looking back at code you've already done, so much copying and pasting and yeah. then debugging everything because often I'm just mixing like two different pieces of code together and that screws everything up and yeah. then I have to go in and like fix it all. And that is coding. I mean, it, it makes my program work. So that's coding. So that brings us to your tool. What are you going to show us today? So my tool pick is the Circuit Playground Express by Adafruit. So this is, um, it's a microcontroller and it's a development board that they developed, I think originally they developed it for use in a classroom environment for students and teachers to work on coding projects without having to build a circuit from scratch. Um, but 
It's also a great tool for adults who want to learn coding, like me, um, and just anyone who wants to prototype projects like this, because it's, it is a microcontroller, but it's got a ton of things built into it, like sensors and um, NeoPixels already on board. So you don't have to create your circuit from scratch to get to your idea. You've got inputs and outputs ready to go. You just plug it in and you're ready to dive into coding, like the hard part. And for me, this has been a game changer because Previously, when I had to kind of design my own project for experimenting with code, I would build the whole thing. And then by the time I got to the coding portion, I'm already fatigued. I'm tired. I've been, I want my project to be done. And I didn't really have the patience at that point in the project to sit down and learn code, you right. know? And this way, I can just before I build anything, I can plug this into my computer, I can jump into make code, or I can load up something I've already written in circuit Python, and I can already tinker and I can just decide at that point, like, do I want to use a microphone? There's a microphone on here. Do I want to use a light sensor? There's one already on here. I don't have to build anything to get to that idea. Right. So everything on it, it's, I'll just like point out what's going on. Um, there's 10 NeoPixels built into the board. There are um, And those all are kinds addressable, of... addressable LEDs for people who just aren't thinking about NeoPixels. Yeah. So there's 10 LEDs and you can change the colors in the code. Yep, they're yeah. individually addressable RGB LEDs. So they can be any color you want. You tell the board which one to light up and what color you want it to be. Um, it's also got a microphone a light sensor, which can also be a color sensor. It's got um, a temperature sensor, and it's, I think there's an accelerometer on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's got, oh, it's got infrared transmission and receiving. So if you have two of these boards, they can like talk to each other across a room or across some distance. Um, it has buttons built in, so you don't have to wire up buttons. You could just tell it to turn the button on and use it. It's got a switch on it. Um, and, oh, all of these pins around the outside are uh, input-output pins, so you can connect things up to it and control other things. And uh, it's also got capacitive touch on, I think, seven of these pins, which is really cool. That means you can connect something to it that's conductive. And if you touch it, the board can sense that you're touching it. So you can create touch sensors. You can make a touch keyboard. There's all kinds of things you can do with this one board. Yeah. So like my, I have my space helmet here, which um, I'll just plug it in. My space helmet is a good example of using the circuit playground for prototyping. That thing's beautiful, Sophie. I, I oh, watched that thing take shape on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, so I much really cool enjoy stuff going on with like helmet. posting about it. But um, it's got it's got a different microcontroller in here, and it's got a microphone and um, NeoPixel LEDs, and they're all separate components um, inside the helmet. But when I was working on this, I had all these ideas. I was like, what do I want this helmet to do? I want it to react to me somehow, or I want it to feel alive. And I decided I wanted these lights to light up when I talk. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to work out that sound reactive component. But I wanted to do that before I did my build because I didn't again realize that that wasn't going to work. So I just used my circuit playground to write code that um, used the onboard microphone and the onboard NeoPixels and made it work on one of these. And then I knew I could get it to work on this using a board that also is programmable in CircuitPython. And then I just took the code that I wrote for this and changed a couple of the, uh, of the inputs and outputs. And it, it worked perfectly on my helmet. And that, for me, is just such a game changer because yeah. it's like a prototyping lab on a board, right? Yeah. 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 And then I don't have to commit this to this project. Now I can prototype my next project and decide what I want to get 
you know, to make that one work. Um, and I, I often take my code from one project and apply it to my next project with just a few little tweaks. So this is perfect for figuring out that transition, you know? Yeah. Um, and we should probably mention that the board's cost is around like 20, was it 23, 25 bucks? 25 dollars. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, not cheap. cheap. No. Right. But the microcontroller in this helmet is about $10. Um, and for most of my projects, I use a Gemma microcontroller, which mm -hmm. is about $5. So if you invest in one of these, you'll know exactly you know, what, what you need to do. You can work out with this board how many inputs you're going to need, um, how many outputs you're going to need, what kind of uh, components you're going to hook up to it. And you can decide then, like, OK, I can get away with the $5 Gemma, because I'm only using like three of these. I'm, I don't need, I don't even know how many this is. Right. Or you don't need or whatever. Or you don't need the buttons or all, all the things. Yeah. You need. Um, and I also like to do projects where uh, this is just left exposed. So I have a skirt here that you probably can't even see um, the whole thing. But uh, it's got LEDs in the skirt. Oh, yeah. Down there. Um, and it's got a circuit playground here, uh, circuit playground express, and it's going to use, it's using temperature to change the color of these lights because in Seattle, we just went through a whole bunch of snow. And so I just got this idea like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you went outside and it was like frozen and it, like turned your skirt blue. So, um, so I programmed that and, in circuit Python and I've got the circuit playground express here and I left it visible and exposed. So I could do something like turn the lights on on the circuit playground, or I could change it to be sound reactive, temperature reactive. And just leaving the board exposed like this makes that so easy. I can just plug my computer right into it. And like I'm literally programming my skirt <laughs> to do something different. And it just reacts. Yeah. So and I think it's, so it's worth mentioning too that this one, this board, like there's a lot of boards like this, but this one in particular is designed for taking battery power, like those little LiPo recharge yeah. boards. So instead of like an Arduino Uno, I mean, you could put like a nine volt battery into it for a while and take it around. But this one really is designed to be a wearable board for, for portable projects. Yeah, it also has these, these um, IO pins are like they, they're sewable, like you can sew into these with conductive thread, which is something I've done in my other projects also. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to solder either. If you want to connect this to something or build it into a project, you can actually just sew conductive thread right to this board. Um, and you don't have to know how to solder to use it. Or like you were showing earlier, you can use alligator clips. There's yeah. just, it's, whatever level you're comfortable with working with electronics. And if that level is zero, you can still, you know, tinker around with this. Where can people find your other projects? Uh, so I try to put all my projects on my website, which is sophiewong.com. I'm a little bit behind because I've been making so many things lately. Um, but I'm also easy to find on Twitter at Sophie Wong. And on Instagram, I post a lot of photos of my work in progress on Instagram. So there I'm at Sophie Wong Makes. And I've got a YouTube channel, which I'm planning to make more videos for. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to make a video about my helmet probably next. You should definitely so. make a video about that helmet. Yeah. Thanks. I, I might make a few because I've got a lot to say about it. I learned a lot doing it. So yeah. And also you can just take it around to maker fairs and wear the helmet around. I mean, it's, it's I am like planning to. Multi-use. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, th I thought this was great. And I hope people will uh, check out the Circuit Playground Express. We'll have a link in the description. Cool. And um, I'll, I'll also link out to the projects that people have for that as well. Awesome. Thanks so All much right. for having me. Yeah. Thanks for talking, Sophie. Yep.